Good morning, everybody. We're just going to wait a couple more minutes as people uh, join. So we'll start soon. All right, I see more people coming in the room here. We're just gonna give it about one more minute here and then we'll get started. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, uh, thank you for joining this morning's webinar. My name is Adam Jace. I'm Director of Marketing with Pivot Hearing. And uh, just a quick overview on Pivot Hearing. We're a practice development services group. We're designed to help fortify practices and make them successful because we know that you provide the best patient care. So we do lots of webinars every year, and we like to bring good, practical, educational content to practice owners and providers. Today's topic is going to be a great one, and I'm really excited to be joined here with David Lisko. So David earned his doctorate in audiology from Northeast Ohio AUD Consortium in Kent and Akron, Ohio, and began his career at the Cleveland Clinic. Since 2008, David has spent much of his time on the manufacturing side of the industry and has held various director and vice president of sales training roles. He's been invited as a public speaker and sales trainer at the regional, national, and international level. And being a provider myself, I can tell you I've been through a number of training sessions with David, and they've been really great. Uh, this is real world and relevant content that you'll be able to use with patients later today. So I think you'll find it very interesting. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to David. Thank you, Adam, and hello, everybody. And of course, my slides aren't uh, moving forward because that's how things always work. Uh, so bear with me. And if it doesn't work, it's okay because we still have plenty of things we can talk about. But to, to start off, you know, I always I'm interested to know what you want to get from this. You know, I certainly have an agenda. I'm going to go over certain topics for sure. But I'm always very, very interested to know what are you interested in getting out of today? So if you wanna send some comments to Adam as, as we go through, I wanna make sure I cover things that are pertinent to you. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna to try to figure out how to share my screen again. It worked earlier and now hopefully it will work again. And if not, Adam, maybe you can uh, sure. take over the screen. Yeah, for some reason it's frozen on me now. So of course th there's always something that, that happens like that. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, send it to you. So- Sure, yeah, give me one yeah. second here. Thanks, Adam. And oh, perfect. And okay, so yeah, again, and, and oh, also by the way, thank you, Adam, for sharing. I want to make this kind of fun as well as informative, and so I'm going to give out little five dollar Starbucks gift cards for people. So this first slide you're looking at, of, I want to know what you want from this. If the first person to tell me who that group of people is, I'll give you a five dollar gift card. So um, we'll kind of do that throughout the presentation. So let Adam know if you know who it is, the first person to get it correct. I'll get your email address and I will send it to you. So hopefully you'll start thinking about some of the things you want from this. And then if we go to the next slide, we can kind of dig into a little bit. So the, the, I'll give you a little bit of uh, background history of me. That is a real picture. Yes, the hair is gone, but the person still remains the same. And Adam, very kindly, thanks for sharing my bio. But I, I want to kind of give you an idea of what my experience has been, so you know where this is coming from uh, altogether. So I started out uh, as a, a, a touring musician for many, many years. 
And um, Adam, if you don't mind the, the advance, please. Um, so I started out as a touring music musician for many years and realized I knew a lot about sound and frequency and compression, which led me to audiology. So I, I became an audiologist and I, my first job was at the Cleveland Clinic where I saw patients all day long. And I wanna tell you that my help rate initially was like 40%. And by the time I was done, it was well over 70. So I wanna share some of those ideas with you. That job led me to be an Oticon rep. And uh, I was fortunate to have growth every year for seven years straight. I got promoted national sales trainer. And here's why this is important. As national sales trainer, I would go to clinics all around the country and learn from people. What is it that you do differently? What makes you successful? And they would always share it with me because I wasn't their rep. I wasn't going to go to their competitors and share these things. So what today's training is really based on is information I've learned from these clinics who are successful and what they do differently, my own experiences. And I've continued in my career to be VP of professional development and sales training. So it's a lot of cumulative ideas over the years that have worked. So that's those are the things I want to share with you today. I also want to share that none of us is as smart as all of us. So I don't want you to think like, oh, this guy thinks he's an expert. I don't. I have a lot of experience, but I also would love to hear from you. And there's some time at the end we can kind of talk about, are there ideas that you like? I show this picture of Christmas cookies because that's how I look at this presentation. If you have gone to a party or picnic over the holidays and there's like Christmas cookies, some you love, some you'll try, and some you're like, oh, I hate those. Same thing. I'm going to share some ideas with you. Some I think you'll love. Some I hope you'll try and some you're not going to like, and that's okay. So it's not meant to be do all these things. What you're doing is wrong. It really is to help supplement what you do so well already and give you some additional ideas. I like to look at this as three sections of a patient visit. So the first one really comes down to connection. How do we connect with people? And it goes beyond being friendly. And people think, oh, I do an intake form and I'm really good about being friendly. But there are strategies and a lot of research behind how to build rapport with people, how to say things, when to say things, what to say to really make them feel comfortable and want to move forward. The second part of that is going to be the diagnosis part. How do you talk about those results? What happens when a patient says this? How can you be most effective with that interaction? And then finally, solutions. How do we solve the problem of what you're going through? So that if you think about it in those three buckets, connection, diagnosis, and solution, that's kind of how we'll break this down. So let's talk about that connection piece. And, and I mentioned, you know, it goes a bit further than just being friendly. Like we see patients all the time. We have our things and our ways we do it, but I, I wanna go over some strategies on how to build that a little bit more. So on this next slide, what, what I wanna do is kind of do an interview. Um, here's trivia question number two. The first person who recognizes who Jimmy Fallon is interviewing in this picture gets a $5 Starbucks gift card. So first one to be right, we'll go from there. But Adam, I'd like to interview you for a moment if I can. And I'm, I'm gonna do this twice to give you guys an example. Now, this is not meant to be like, that was good, that was terrible. But I want you to kind of see the difference between the two and we're gonna talk about this. And we have not prepped this, like uh, we've not set this up. So it's gonna be completely organic. So interview number one, Adam, um, tell me, where do you live? I live in uh, Windsor, California. Okay, I, are you from California originally? Yeah. Okay, um, do you think you'll stay in California? I think so. Yeah. What What do you like about it? Um, I like, uh, you know, I have family here. Um, my job is here. I'm raising my family here, uh, kids in school. A lot of uh, fun stuff to do with, um, you know, like Tahoe and San Francisco and LA down south. So I, I think it's a great place to live. So you like to travel throughout the whole state? Yeah. Okay, so excellent, Adam, thank you. That, that's interview number one. And there's nothing wrong with any of those questions. Here's interview number two. Adam, tell me where do you live? Like, where are you from? Uh, Windsor, California. And, and what do you like most about California? Um, I like the, the diversity of the landscape and uh, the people. So diversity, tell me what that means. 
Sure. So, you know, when I'm thinking about the state itself in geography, that means um, everything from uh, the coastal areas to redwood forests to the desert um, to the Central Valley to Sierra Mountains. So in my opinion, um, there's not many other places in the world where you can visit so many different unique uh, geographies within a short drive. And what about those unique ge geographies is meaningful to you? Like, why does that matter? I think it's interesting. Um, you know, if, if you compare it to being in a place where maybe you have to drive uh, five hours to, to get to an area that looks different, um, being able to you know, travel short distances and, and have a different scenery and also visit people who kind of have a, a different way of living. I think that's very interesting. Yeah, so it sounds to me like you're someone who enjoys all life has to offer. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Adam. Okay, so if you go to the next slide, a couple things here. There's two different types of questions we can ask people. Now, the first kind of question is more informational. And as human beings, it's easier to ask those questions. But if you noticed, when I asked Adam those questions about where are you from and what, you know, have you always grown up there? It's a lot of yes, no answers. And we don't learn a lot about him. The second half were more emotionally based questions. What about that do you like? Why is that important to you? And what I hope you noticed is in the second interview, Adam did a lot more of the talking and we got to know him a little bit better. Here's why I bring that up. As clinicians, we're really good at what brought you in today. Have you had hearing loss uh, before? Have you worn hearing aids before? Do you have any ringing? We ask these yes or no fact-based questions. And if we can get into that more emotional base, and I'm not talking like Dr. Phil, like tell me how that feels, but more emotionally based where you're letting the patient tell you instead of you asking yes or no questions, it makes a huge difference of what you learn and how they start to trust you. So if you go to the next, um, hit, hit the slide advance for me, Adam, if you would. So here's a perfect example. It has nothing to do with audiology, but let's say you're in a neighborhood and like, man, the lights go out and like, oh, it's kind of scary. You could say, wow, when the lights went out, did you feel nervous? Yes, I did. Or no, I didn't. As opposed to, if you go to the next piece of it, the more emotional is, what were you experiencing immediately after the lights went out in your neighborhood? Oh man, I was really scared. I heard the wind howling and a dog barking and I couldn't see. So by asking those questions, again, that first part is, did you feel nervous? Yeah, or no. Well, what were you experiencing? Let's them tell you what's been going on. It gets to more of that emotional, what was I feeling at that time? So let's talk about that now more clinically. So if we look at the next group of questions, you know, again, we can say, what brought you in? Have you had a hearing test before? Has anyone told you? Yes, they have. No, they haven't. Yes, I do have difficulty in noise. No, I don't. Yes, I do hear the TV. No, I don't. Again, there's nothing wrong with asking some of these, but it doesn't really get, tap into what made that person come through your door. Now, let's look at some of the emotionally based questions. Okay, let's say my, my wife told me I need to come in. How has that impacted your life? Oh, man, she's always yelling at me that I can't hear her. Do you like being yelled at? No, I can't stand it. Do you think she likes to yell? No, I don't. All right, so then what happens next? Well, let me tell you, we start to argue and we start to fight and then we don't even talk to each other. So again, it allows the patient to tell you what's going on, which then leads to the way you sum it up. If you notice when I talk with Adam, I summed it up with, wow, it sounds like you're someone who really likes to experience different things. Well, yeah, what that does for your patient when you sum it up that way is it lets them know Number one, you've listened to me. And number two, you have a pretty good understanding of who I am based on what I just told you. So again, in our patient experience, you know, my wife's yelling at me and it's frustrating. I don't like it and she doesn't like it. And what happens next is we argue. It sounds to me like hearing loss is causing some rifts that don't necessarily have to be there. Mr. Patient, if I were to help you get rid of some of that tension, would that be something you're interested in? Oh my God, yeah, if you could make us get along again, I'd pay you a million dollars. Again, it starts to lead to that, what's really going on, and then how do we help solve it? And that's gonna be our goal. So we wanna start moving forward and how do we solve that? So I'm not sure what happened to the, the slides, but uh, let me see if I can share my screen. We lost them. And I apologize everybody for, uh, for this kind of being a little wonky. 
still not going to happen. Adam, I'm not sure if you're able to still uh, share your screen or not. If Again, if not, we can kind of walk through it. So, so we talk about building those emotionally based questions. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to allow the patient to kind of give you more information so you can start building on how do we make this better? And, and one of the things I always talk to my patients about, I, I told you I went from that 40% help rate to over 70. What I would always say to those patients is, my job is to make your life safer, easier, or better. A lot of times people come in here expecting, oh, you're going to test my hearing, you're going to sell me hearing aids. Eh, that's not what I'm here to do. I want to understand what's going on in your life. What caused you to come in here today? It's not fun. You didn't wake up like someday I'm going to go see an, a clinician, an audiologist. You didn't wake up thinking that. Something brought you here to do that. Tell me what that is. Tell me the experiences that are coming from that. How do I make your life safer, easier, or better? If we can find a way to make things better for you, that's our goal for today. So if you start with that, then patients kind of buy into, okay, like you're not just the guy schlepping hearing aids to me. You're someone who's actually looking holistically at what's going on in my life and how do you make that better? So those are some ways to connect with people. And again, it's asking those emotional questions and summing it up with, wow, it sounds to me like this is really frustrating for you. Yeah, it's exactly what I'm experiencing. How do we make that better? Let's figure out a plan together to make that better for you. And they start to kind of buy into the process. And what happens is when those objections come up over price or this or that, they start to fade away because you're not talking about a widget, a hearing aid, or, or you know, you're talking more about how do you make my life better? So that makes a big difference. Okay, the, the second piece is the diagnostic part. Now, a couple of things I wanna share with you here. Number one, we've all gone through this and I made this mistake so many times early on in my career that I had to train myself not to do it. So you put the patient in the booth, you do the test, you go take the headphones off or the inserts up. How did I do? Oh, you did great. What you just told them is you did great. And in their mind, they're thinking, oh, I passed the test. I don't need your help. I did great. So a way to get around that is you can say, your result, your, your answers were very, very consistent. I know we have accurate results. How did I do? Oh man, you did the task perfectly. I know our results are accurate. You're not saying you did great because to them I did great. This is saying we have accurate results. There's no mistaking the data behind what we're going to talk about. So be careful with that. The second thing with diagnostics that I, I really like to share with everybody, we often, and I call it the audiology show, it's like we pack in all the years of what we learned, like here's your audiogram and this is frequency and this is you know, intensity and the, the soft sounds and the loud sounds and left ear and the right ear and the word rec scores are 92 and 88% and blah, 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 blah. And they're sitting there like, what, what are you talking about? I'm a huge fan of simplifying the conversation around the audiogram. So when you talk about it, I learned this from somebody and I, th I thought this was brilliant. I use this ever since. When you show the audiogram, you say, do you see the zero line? I do. I want you to think of zero as 2020 hearing. Any mark you have below zero shows significance of hearing loss. So if you look, these lower frequencies and the blue X is your left ear, the red circle is your right ear. In these lower frequencies, you're under zero, but pretty close to it. But as you go down, it becomes more and more significant. That tells me that you have a significant hearing loss. Get rid of mild, moderate, severe, profound. That's great amongst colleagues because you can paint the picture of the audiogram, but it's not great with patients because if you say to somebody, oh, you had a mild to severe hearing loss, mild, I'm good. And if I'm looking at that audiogram and you say zero to 20 is a normal range, well, half of my frequencies are in the, that range. I mean, yeah, these are way down here, but 50% of them are in there, mild, I'm good. I don't need to move forward. Or the opposite side of that coin, mild to severe. Severe, I can hear you just fine. You're lying. You're just trying to sell me hearing aids. So get rid of those descriptive words like mild, moderate, severe, profound, and replace it with significant. Zero is 2020 hearing. The further below zero you go, the more significant your loss. You can see that all your marks are below zero, but when we get to those high frequencies, they become more significant. What that tells me is you're hearing, but you're not necessarily understanding. And there's a big difference between those two things. I can hear what's going on, but I don't know quite what you're saying. And then you can kind of go from there. And when you go into the word rec scores, you can say, 
when we gave you a boost and made those sounds loud enough, you were able to understand 92% of the words that I said to you. That tells me we can help you with those arguments with your wife. Tie it back into what they came in for, what they told you was their reason for coming in. If we can make it where you're not struggling so hard to hear, you'll be able to have those conversations better and it's gonna ease some of that tension at home. And if you present it in that way, that's the diagnostic part. It becomes a little bit easier for someone to go, okay, I'm not just here to buy hearing aids. I'm here to not have these arguments with my wife any longer. So something to consider there. Part three is gonna be solutions. So how do we become solution-based? There's always that awkward moment of, so what, what do you think? You wanna get hearing aids? I, I don't know. Um, that's never a, a, a good, comfortable conversation. So I will share with you something I learned from some clinicians in Vermont, and I thought this was really smart. As a patient, I'll say like, okay, like I, I've listened to these and, and you know, they sound pretty good. What they say to the patients at that stage is, it takes four things for this to be successful. Two of those things are my responsibility and two of those are yours. And here's what they are. Number one, you have to recognize you have hearing loss. We look at our chart and we show that we do. Do you, do you see that? Do you, yeah, yeah, I see those marks. Yep, okay, so that's one. Number two, you have to be motivated to do something about it. And I wanna get back to that because three and four are my responsibility. Number three is you have to find a hearing instrument that'll do the job you need it to do. The good news is we work with different manufacturers. There are different options out there. We'll find the right one for you. I do this every single day. I know it works for most of my patients. I'm gonna make sure that you're on the right treatment plan to get you to be successful. And number four, you have to have a clinician that's gonna help you and not just try to sell you something and get you on your way for the next person, but really truly invest in what makes your life easier and better. I told you first thing out of my mouth was that's my goal. So you know, we're gonna find the right instrument for you and you have somebody who's gonna advocate for you and make sure that life is better and easier for you. So there's three out of three so far. You recognize you have hearing loss, we'll find the right hearing instrument, you have somebody on your side, which leads us to number four. Are you motivated? And leave it there. If they say, yeah, great, let's look at what your options are. Now you can present the different options and make your recommendation. If they say, not really, well, that's interesting because really it does take these four things for this to work. If you're not motivated, I don't know that it'll work. Tell me why. You kind of came in here and said, you know, you and your wife are arguing. There's a lot of tension at home. You're being less social. You're not going out as much because you can't hear people. It, I just want to understand, we can solve that. What's stopping you from wanting to move forward? Well, how much is it going to cost? I don't want to wear these things. So you get into what their objection is by asking that question. So then you can kind of go into a different thing. We'll, we'll talk about objection handling in just a second. But by kind of coming up with those four things and saying, are you motivated? If they are, you move forward. If they're not, try to dig into why. What's stopping you? You, you made the time to come in here. You talked to me. You went through all these tests. We've discussed these things. We found a solution for you to solve what's been ailing you. Tell me what's stopping you from wanting to move forward. I just want to know. So it's not high pressure. It's just more information gathering. And then you get to those objections and you can handle them. So let's talk about objections. And at the end, I, I wanna take some time to like really talk about specific objections you guys are faced with. But I, I wanna share a strategy with you. It, it's gonna sound cheesy, but when you see it at work and you practice it, it works really, really well. And this idea is called feel, felt, found. Here's how it works. Feel is showing empathy. Felt is showing inclusion because everyone wants to be included. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be weird. I don't want to be the outlier. I want to be part of the masses. And found is the solution. So as an example, here's the objection. These things cost $6,000. That's a lot of money. Instead of like, well, there's a little computer built in there. Like instead of getting like argumentative or trying to state your case, I understand how you feel. You are not the first person to say, yes, $6,000 is a lot of money for, for little pieces of plastic. But what other patients in your position have found is they see the value more than the cost. They start to realize we communicate with people. That's how we connect. That's how we're social. That's how we get along. 
And to bring that back, I've had people say, God, I'd pay a million dollars if I could do that. You don't have to pay a million dollars or $6,000. So while there is a cost associated with this, the value will outweigh the cost. That's what other people have found. So feel, felt, found. You don't necessarily have to say those words of feel, felt, and found. What you can do is, oh, I don't want to wear these, man. They're going to make me look really old. I get it. I totally get it. I've had patients come through the door who've said that to me time and time again. And you know what they do? They end up coming back and saying to me, I guess wearing these doesn't make me look as old as going, what? Say again? Tell me that again? I guess I realize by wearing these, it makes me younger because I'm in part of the conversation again and not kind of fitting into the back. So again, I understand how you feel, however you want to say that. Others have felt that way. You are not alone in this. And what they found, it's not coming from, in my experience, let me tell you what I think. It's what other patients in your position have reported back to me is A, B, and C. So whatever that objection is, I get it. I'm not the first to say it. Other people have solved this same problem. We can work together and solve this for you as well. So we'll, we'll dig into some specific uh, objections uh, as we go. But to me, those are the big three buckets. Connection, diagnostics, and solutions. And we can dig into this more and more. Um, I, I will share with you too, you know, Adam mentioned part of the support uh, that, that Pivot offers, and there, there's a whole lot more too that they're going to get into. But I can do a longer in-person training for you if it's something you want. We're just kind of scratching the surface that we really dig into those things. But I just wanted to mention that to you. And I've done this for, for years. And on average, the ASP has gone up the help rate's gone up about 18% and returns have gone lower. So words really do matter. How you present these things, how you answer these objections, how you present your product. What's the difference in technology? Why would I pay 6,000 and not 2,000? All those kind of things. If you learn the right talk around that, and it's not being tricky or slick, but it's really answering in a way where the patient goes, okay, I understand that. And not let me think about it. Because again, I talk about the audiology show all the time. We go on and on and on. So now you've tested me and, and put yourself in the mind of the patient. You've tested me. Am I losing my hearing? Am I going to be deaf? Is it going to get worse? Oh my God, my wife was right. I got to tell her she was right. It is my fault. Oh my God, what is, what's this going to cost me? This is what's going through my mind as a patient. Mm -hmm. At the same time as a clinician, we so often go, so your word rec scores are, are this percentage and that percentage. And we made it loud. And I put you in, in a speech and noise test and you're explaining all this stuff, blah, 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 because the patient's in their own head. Then you get to this point of, what do you think? What do I think about what? About getting hearing aids. Uh, I need to think about it because they haven't had time to digest what's been happening. And they have all these questions that are unanswered. And we go immediately into the sale. You got to pull back. So you bring them out of the booth, you explain the results, and then you can say, what's on your mind? What questions do you have? That's a lot. We talked about these different tests and what the results were. Tell me what's on your mind. So I have hearing loss. You do. So I've got to tell my wife she was right. Well, it's not a question of saying who's right, who's wrong. It's really kind of working together of, you know, honey, I went and got my hearing tested and we found that there were some things, but I'm going to do something about it. We're going to make this easier together. So it's kind of taking that step back and Am I going to go deaf? Not necessarily. You know, hearing loss can get progressively worse. It can also be maintained and we can help with that. So let's look at all of our options and talk these things through. But if you take that time to talk with your patient and don't just leave them in the lurch thinking and their head spinning and you're still talking at them more and giving them more information, they're, oh, it's overwhelming. And that's why you get that washed out. I need to think about this. So keep it communicative, keep it conversational. Keep checking back into that connection piece. What really brought you in? What problems are you having? How can I help solve them? How do I make your life easier, safer, better? If we focus on that, we can move forward and do more. So that's that's basically some of the things I want to cover. And again, I apologize that the, the slides weren't working. Um, Will, thanks for jumping on and seeing if you could get it to work too. But I, I don't know what happened why they stuck. But absolutely, but hi everybody. I'm a I'm an alternate uh, co-host. Adam had a catastrophic computer failure. <laughs> so I hopped in just to make sure everything kept moving. I actually can share the screen if that would be helpful, David. Yeah, sure. Um, I just want to make sure mind, I'm that, in the... That, uh, yeah, well, that yeah. would be great. And then we'll, we'll kind of look at the slides. We talked about a lot of these things. So the, how did I do was 
don't say you did great. Talk about you were very, very consistent. We got accurate results. So I just want to make sure we didn't miss anything so we can kind of like skip through these will at a pretty good clip. Sure. So th 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 that's my audiology show. Oh, I, oh, I do want to talk about this for a second. Thanks. Something else to really keep in mind. You also want to like really dig in deeper to find out what's meaningful to that patient before you just like railroad like hearing aids and here's all your options. So here, here's my, I love analogies. Here's my analogy. If my wife and kids go to a car dealership, we walk in, we're, we're a happy family. Look at the sunset. Life is great. And we walk into the car dealership and next slide, please. Will, if you would, the sales guy's like, Oh, cool. Family of five. I know just what I'm going to sell them. I'm going to sell them a minivan. And he goes on and on about how safe the minivan is. And for the kids, there's a DVD player in the back and you'll take these family vacations. And he goes on and on and on about this great minivan. And really all we wanted was this convertible. So before you go into, and it happens to all of us because we've done this for years and we've seen patient after patient, we have our routine, we have our sort of like down pat talk tracks, but everybody that comes in your door is different. Their story is unique to them. It may not be unique to you, but it's unique to them. So don't just jump into the, let me tell you about how great this and what this hearing aid does and how this will help solve you. Find out what is it that you want to solve for? Oh, you want a convertible? We have a great Mercedes I want to show you. It's this really cool, like yellow. I love that. But don't go into things they don't care about because if you do, you lose them. Okay, so we talked about how did I do? Um, you know, don't say I did, you did great. Very accurate and tells me our results are accurate. Oh, I love this too. Okay, so this is part of the diagnostic thing. Th thanks for sharing the screen with like, I, like I forgot a couple of things. This is really helpful. Yeah, no problem at all. So this is a tool we created to like really make it click. So you, you talk about the audiogram of zero is 2020 hearing. The further below zero you go, low pitches are, that's what carry speech and higher frequencies are, are clarity. So I would show this on 11 uh, by eight and a half laminated sheet. Can you read this for me? And I would ask you if, if we had more interaction. Someone goes, oh, uh, e, uh, no idea. Then I flip that chart over, which is the next slide. Can you read what that says? And most of you are probably going, how many children do you have? Right, so if you go back, and I flip the chart back over, these are the vowels. And vowels are power of speech. You know someone's talking, you just don't know what they're saying. But if you flip it over, the consonants give you clarity. Now, if you look at the slide for a second, Mr. and Mrs. Patient, we're not gonna give you perfect hearing. But what we will do is we will try to provide this information back to your brain so that now you can understand beyond hearing. And we don't fill in every blank. The better instrument, the better technology level that you get, the more of these blanks get filled in. Your brain has an easier time understanding what's being said because the instrument's doing the work for you. So our overall goal is to take you from a o e u o to how many children do you have? And depending upon how much support you need, and we can talk about like the different technology levels, but we really wanna get into filling in those blanks so you can go from hearing to understanding. This chart was fantastic, especially if they have a significant other, because then people are like, oh my God, I get it. I was yelling, but it really has to do with clarity. And the patient looks at this and goes, that makes sense to me. I am hearing, but I'm not understanding. So you're telling me hearing aids will bring back some of this information? That's what I'm telling you. As we look at this chart, this is your prescription. We plug that into the software. The hearing aid gives you a boost in those frequencies so that you are back to understanding again, not just hearing. Um, more cookies. So hopefully that, that's my little reminder of like, remember, hope you like some of these things. Some things you'll try and some things, if you don't like it, that's okay too. Um, we talked about some solutions. We talked about the audiogram zero. We talked about the four things. And well, if you would pull those up in case you like this cookie, um, these are the four things to, to talk about. Again, two are the, the patient's responsibility and two are mine as the clinician. You have to recognize you have hearing loss. Our chart shows that you do. You have to be motivated to do something about it. Let's get back to that one because the next two are on me. You have to have a hearing instrument that works well. We have lots of choices. We'll find the right one for you. And then finally, the last one, you have to have a clinician that will support you and help you reach your goals. Now let's get back to that second, are you motivated? 
So those are the four things. And, and, and again, I learned this from some clinicians in, in Vermont who every patient when they're like, oh, I don't know, hey, look, this can work, but it takes these four things. Um, we talked about Phil felt found, but I do in just a minute want to get into some specific things, whether it's around third party or big box or some of the things you run into. And I'll try to help you with, with some of the talk tracks if you struggle with that um, to get through some of those objections. So we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, I did mention to you past results. So if you implement some of these things, you will see results. I, I can promise you that. Um, but through Pivot, it's something they offer you guys um, is more in-depth sales training on this type of thing to really get into a lot of other examples and things that have worked and helped clinics in, in improve in these areas. We're happy to do that for you. Just talk to, to Will or Adam or Chelsea, whoever your contact is there, and we can certainly help in that way. All right, if, if Adam's with us, I think he's gonna join us, rejoin us here. Perfect, and well, thanks for I'm doing here. that. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks no so problem much. at all. So thank you, David. Um, before we jump into the q and I just wanted to read Pivot's mission statement which is pivot hearing stands with private practices because we believe they provide the best patient care. And it is our vision to successfully fortify those practices to thrive in their local markets. So we offer practice development services in three major categories. Uh, the first one is offense. This is how we help you acquire organic diversified sources of new patients. The second one is defense. And these are the ways we help you nurture and engage your existing patient database, as well as defend against any and all competitive threats. And the third one is coaching. Uh, this is all the other practice management support we deliver to you and your team, such as recruiting, training, KPI analysis, and so much more. So we'd love to get, uh, to get the chance to know you, learn about your practice, your market, um, see if we can better support you and help you grow. So you can learn more and schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with our team at pivothearing.com. And with that, we'll move on to some Q&A. And I wanted to mention also, um, if you didn't, you saw the guy with the slam dunk, that's actually Adam. Adam's dunking that basketball on that one slide. So yeah, he's quite too, uh, too shy to tell you that. Um, okay, so I, I went through some of the, the, the questions which I wanna get to, but your final trivia question, who can name this character? So somebody got the Beastie Boys, congratulations. Someone got Robert Plant. That, that's good, because he looks a lot different than he did when he was super famous. So well done there. Um, who's this? First person to get it correct will also get a $5 Starbucks gift card. Um, and I'll, I'll answer some of the questions that were listed. Can, can I share the slides? I'm kind of weird about that. Um, just be, and I'll tell you why. I've done presentations for the last 15, 20 years of my career, and I can't tell you how many times I'd show up and be like, that's my slide that someone else is presenting. So I'm a little protective of that, but I'm always happy to talk through things. And I know that the folks at Pivot are always happy to talk through things too. Um, so kind of funny there. Um, I, I do want to kind of open up the, the questions. Adam, if you want to moderate so, that, that'd be yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so we have a question here. Um, Partners, family, friends are an important part of the experience end to end. Any tips specific to including them as more than bystanders or agitators? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're always taught to address the patient and you should do that. But it's really important to include other people. And there's a whole talk I do on generational differences. And a lot of times if it's an adult child with their mom or dad, there's ways to include them. So you, you want to talk to the patient, but you've got to tap into what's meaningful to everybody. If you have somebody who is, let's say, 80 and older, it's, it's the silent generation. They don't care. They don't want to spend money. They care about family. So you want to talk to them about, are you seeing a difference? Well, I noticed a difference, but I don't really want to spend the money. Well, then you talk to that family member. When you hear your mom or dad say that, like, what do you have to say? Mom, dad, oh my God, we want to talk to you. Like, you don't hear us. Who cares about the money? Then you go back to the patient and say, when you hear your son and daughter tell you the money isn't important, but you being part of their life is important. How do you feel? It's amazing how they go, ah, I guess it makes sense. So you use that person as an advocate by tapping into what their generation responds to. So Gen Xers, as an example, want to be included and want to be involved. You are going to get the occasional, 
you know, like, tell them, honey, I told you. And they kind of get argumentative. A way you can deal with that is say, you know, I love your opinion. And this is definitely a family discussion and a family decision. And I want to respect that. Right now, I really want to talk about what the patient is experiencing and what their take is. And then I'm going to come to you as well, because it really is a collaborative effort. So you can nip in the bud that argumentative, like, I tell you all the time. Like, it doesn't escalate. If you acknowledge, I love that you're here. It tells me that you're involved. It tells me that you want solutions because this is a family thing. And, and so many people come in here on their own. I love the fact that I want to congratulate you for being part of this process. Kudos to you. Let's start here and kind of find out so we can really dig in what are you experiencing. And what it does is it kind of quiets down that negative influence because they know they're going to be heard. But they get a chance to hear what the root of the problem is. And then when you go back, you can control that conversation instead of, so what do you think? Well, I think instead of that, it's based on what the patient said. When they say that there's a lot of argument, do you find there's a lot of arguments? Oh, my God, we argue all the time. And how does that make you feel? Like, I can't stand it. Great. So we talk about making life safer, easier, and better. One way we can make better life better for both of you is to stop that arguing. One way to help stop that arguing is to get the patient fit with these instruments. Now that you guys can hear each other better, you don't have to yell so much anymore. So it's, it's kind of taking that very calm, you're all gonna have your peace, but let's always keep back to that initial goal of what we uncovered by connecting. Great. So another question came through. Um, some patients are closed off and do not open up despite asking a variety of open-ended questions. Do you have any tips for these patients? Yep. So uh, another technique that I would use is a one to 10 scale. And so they don't want to open up. So let me ask you this on a scale of one to 10. And I, I choose my words very carefully. 10 is I hear perfectly well in every situation. And one is I can't hear a thing. I should have done something years ago. Where are you? And most times you'll get, I don't know, seven or eight. Why not a nine or 10? So whatever number they give you, go a little, why aren't you that? Well, there's this one place we go and it's hard to hear. Tell me more about that. Well, yeah, there's always loud music playing and my wife's a slow talker and low talker. Tell me more, like have them keep talking about the situations where they're not doing well because what it does, they start to own their hearing loss and that's the way they start opening up. So you mentioned you go to this restaurant. How often do you go? Uh, we usually go once a week, but now we're going once a month because it's so loud in there. Oh, so maybe one way we can make life better for you is to get you back to going to that place you love going. Would that be something you would enjoy? So you can always draw more things out of people and that one to 10 scale works well. Tell me more about that and really pay attention to what they say. Okay, so would it be possible to make life easier for you if, would you pick a different restaurant? Would you, like, let's get you social again. Okay, so maybe what we could focus on is getting you back out and enjoying those evenings out where it's not stressful for you. You can always kind of bring it back, but but it takes learning how to ask those questions and like how to really pay close attention and drive the conversation based on their responses. Okay. Um, will you talk through the how many ch children do you have again? Just want to hear the talk track again. Of course. So on that slide, it, so it's how many children do you have? It's all the vowels. And on the flip side, it's all the consonants. So I will give you exactly what I say to patients. So I'll say to them, can you read this for me? And they go, uh, no idea. Flip it over. Can you read this for me? How many children do you have? Oh, perfect, thanks. How many children do you have? That's right. Now it's the same sentence on both sides. The difference is on side one, it's all vowels. On side two, it's all consonants. With vowels in our language, that's what gives you the power of speech. That's what carries language. I can hear you, but the consonants give you clarity. I can't understand you. So what we want to do here, when you get help with hearing instruments and our support, and we work together on this, we want to get it to where you are now understanding. We're going to fill in those blanks to make the puzzle easier for you to hear. Now, if you notice, we're not going to fill in every blank. You're not going to have normal hearing again. But the better the instrument you get, the more blanks get filled in, your brain has an easier time solving the puzzle. We're giving you more information. 
it's a really effective tool. It, it, it works quite well. I think it's great. Makes a lot of sense. Um, another one, David. What have you found to be successful when talking through differences in technology levels? Like what's the difference between the four or five or six thousand dollar models? Yeah, it's all about cognitive load. Um, I don't go into features like this has 20 channels, this has 24 channels. Because again, that doesn't land with people. Um, I'll give you a, one example, kind of a quick example. And I know a lot of you are probably California, so maybe this won't land, but I've got other examples that I can share. But I would often say to people, I grew up in Cleveland, if you are driving from, from work to home in February, like it's 10 o'clock, two o'clock on the wheel and you're like, oh man, and the wind's blowing, the roads are icy, you're tapping the brakes and your body's tense. You get home. All I want to do, man, is like put on Netflix, get a pizza and take a nap. Like I'm exhausted from that. You take that same drive in July and the windows are down and the music's playing and you pull in your drive you're like, how did I even get home? I wasn't paying attention. You have so much more energy because all of us only have so much capacity of mental or cognitive load. So what happens when you are having, when you have hearing loss, man, you're struggling, you're struggling, you're struggling. So the difference between the 4,000, the 5,000 and the $6,000 is how much information is being fed to you? How much easier is your drive home from work? The better the instrument, the clearer the road becomes. You have more energy at the end of the day. You have more capacity to do other things because you're not working so hard to hear people. Got it. Another question here. Um, the question says, what about big box store or OT, OTC devices? So I think the, the person asking it means, um, you know, how do you differentiate yourself in that, in this kind of consultative process if somebody is shopping in those different channels? So a, a few thoughts on this. First and foremost, and, and I, I don't know the answer and you don't have to respond to this, but I want you to think about what really does make you different? Like, like take the time and think about what makes me different than these big box stores. And I'll, I'll give you an example. There's a clinic I saw in Michigan many years ago. And they said, well, we've been serving the community for 30 years. They can't say that. And what we did is we built a marketing package around that. And the marketing package read, we've been serving the community for 30 years. Come in and find out why. And patients would come in like, wow, that's a long time. Like, tell me what your secret is. They told me they had their best month ever after that marketing campaign. So step one, what really makes you different? And you can't say like, well, we care about our patients or we provide like, so do they. So what makes you stand out? What makes you different? Think about that. Number one. Number two, something I, I'm a firm believer in this. If a patient is in front of you and they bring up, well, these are cheaper at Costco. Why should I get them from you? They want to know your value. Because if it only came down to price, they would have already gone to Costco and bought those. They wouldn't even be in your office. If they know they're cheaper, why wouldn't they buy them cheaper? And think of yourself as a consumer. I like guitars. If you had the same guitar in two different stores, but it was $500 less, I'd be an idiot not to buy the cheaper one. Unless you give me good reasons why you're charging $500 more. So think about that. They just wanna know your value. How do you talk about that value? An example that I can give you, and this has worked for many clinics, is you say, okay, here's what I want you to think about. There's a difference between coming into a clinic and going into a store. When you go into a Costco, for example, and you wanna get hearing aids, let's say you have, and I'm making the number up, doesn't matter. You have $5,000 to spend on this. You're a customer in a store. And quite frankly, they don't care if you buy $5,000 hearing aids, a $5,000 grill, TV or $5,000 worth of peanuts. It doesn't matter to them. They sell lots of different things. You're in line, they ring you out $5,000. Please come back customer when you need something more. Here, you're not a customer, you're a patient. Here, we absolutely care what you spend your $5,000 on because we don't sell gas grills and TVs and peanuts and all that stuff. All we provide is hearing healthcare solutions. We are invested in you as a patient we are not a clerk. We are, we are someone who has studied this. We do this every single day. So yes, while it's less expensive there, what you get here is a completely different experience, completely different support, and a completely different focus. Here's another question that came through, which is along the same lines. Um, 
Do you proactively talk about the differences between your clinic, Costco, OTC, et cetera, or do you only bring that up if the patient brings it up? Yeah, I, I think that's a matter of preference. There's no right or wrong reason, but it has to be a compelling reason. Um, the, the key to that, I firmly believe, is for you not to talk about it, but use testimonials your patients have given you. So I, I would avoid the, what we do is this, what they do is that, that sounds defensive. But if you can say, you know what, I just wanna share this with you. In the past month, we've had 15 patients get help through our clinic. All 15 of them are aware they can get these cheaper. All 15 of these are where they can get OTCs, yet they still came through our clinic for their help. Why? Well, we asked them, why did you come here? And they said, you always answer my questions. You treat me with respect, like whatever those answers are. So something I'll encourage you to do is start asking people if they purchase hearing aids through you, what made you choose to work with us? And keep track of their answers so that when you get that, why shouldn't I get OTCs or why shouldn't I get Costco? You know, here's what our patients tell us. They find we are this, this, and this. And if that resonates with you, then you're in the right place. Sounds good. Okay, I think that is all of the questions here. Okay, did anyone get who this person is? Yeah, actually, we got a lot of responses on that. Um, <laughs> so I have noted who got it first, and uh, they'll get credit for that. <laughs> Our yeah. Borshak. Yeah, yep. what, a, yep. what a fun group you guys are. Um, okay, so yeah, Beastie Boys, Robert Plant, Arn Horshack. You know, I tried not to give my age away too much. So, but nice job, everybody. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you got a couple of Christmas cookies out of it uh, that, that'll help you that you can start implementing today. Um, if you're part of Pivot, congratulations. If you're not yet, you should be because they give you such great support. I'm happy to support you further as well. And uh, I, I hope this was a, a good experience for you and, and what you hoped it would be. So thank you. Thank you guys, Adam and Will, for having me on here. And thanks, everybody, for, for tuning in. And again, I, I hope it was helpful for you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great everybody. rest of your week. Thank you, everybody. Bye. <laughs>